So, you want to make a Star Wars project and you need to model a ship in Blender. Well if so, this is the tutorial for you. First of all, you need to decide what ship you're going to make and then find some blueprints. You can get some good options from a quick Google search, although if you're stuck, I recommend looking at Deviant Art, as I found some pretty good designs there. You want at least top, side and front views. If you're lucky, you can find plans that have a rear view too, which makes modeling an awful lot easier. But I find there aren't many blueprints with a rear view, so the first three will usually have to do. Once you've got your blueprints, you need to separate the views into individual photos. Any basic photo editor can do this, I'm just going to use preview on my iMac. I find that you don't want to crop right to the edges of the view, leave a little border around the edges. This is especially true when some of the lines are a bit blurry, as they are in these blueprints. Now it's time to open Blender. You want to bring in each of the views and rotate them so that they are correctly orientated. You'll need the Images as Planes add-on for this. It's included with Blender, but you may need to enable it in Preferences. You can use background images. The advantage of them is that they will always show no matter what viewport setting you're using, whereas Images as Planes will only show in Look Dev, which is the old textured mode, or in the rendered viewport but I find it useful to be able to rotate around the blueprints to get a better idea of where everything is in 3D space. And I find the blueprints are a little bit easier to line up too. Talking about lining up blueprints, next you want to add a cube and then by scaling and moving the cube, as well as scaling and moving the blueprints, you can line up the three separate views. I like to use the widest point of each blueprint view to line up with the cube. It's important to remember that the blueprints may not be 100% accurate. In fact, most of the time I find that they're not 100% accurate. You just want to line up everything as well as possible. This isn't an exact science and you'll end up having to do a lot of things by eye when you model, even if you do have perfect blueprints. Once everything has been lined up, you can start modeling. I find it's easiest to start with the big pieces first. You should be able to create almost anything from the basic cube, sphere and cylinder. It's better not to have too many large complicated objects, instead splitting them into smaller pieces, meaning you have a much easier time keeping the geometry simple. To start off with, you just want to block out the big obvious shapes of the ship. You can add plenty of smaller details later. It can be very hard to model the sections of the ship that aren't at the widest points, as there's much less detail in the blueprints about where they should be. Unfortunately, the only real way around this is to eye it up and then adjust the geometry until it looks right. This takes some practice, so I would recommend doing a few practice models before you start working on a really big and important project. As you can see from the way I'm modeling, I'm trying to keep the total amount of geometry under control. If you start adding too many vertices, then any change to the mesh can be extremely difficult, not to mention how hard life will be when it comes time to unwrap the model. I find it's very important to avoid any awkward intersections in geometry, otherwise when you add the subsurf modifiers you end up with a lot of pinching and just weird geometric shapes. One of my best tips for doing this sort of hard surface modelling is to use the shrink wrap modifier. By having a basic shape, duplicating it, then adding the shrink wrap modifier to the duplicated mesh, you can move vertices around to add detail whilst ensuring that you retain a nice smooth curve. This was very helpful for when I modeled the cockpit area of the ship. Now I'm going to start adding more detail to the ship. All these little things like this strange half hexagonal thing are what makes your model feel real. Sometimes you'll have to improvise if the blueprints don't go into enough detail. I like to think, how would this be made? Are there angle brackets, welds or rivets? Because in 3D modeling it's perfectly possible to have objects hanging around completely unsupported in mid-air. But that's not how the real world works, so anything you can do that makes it look like you put thought into how the ship would be constructed adds another layer of realism. When it comes to using the subsurface modifier, when you first add it, your mesh ends up looking like a weird sort of blob. But when it comes to fixing this, what is the best method? Holding edges or edge creasing? Personally, I like to use edge creasing wherever possible as it stops the mesh from becoming too messy with loads of loop cuts, it keeps the poly count low and it's much easier to adjust later. That being said, there is a time and place for using loop cuts as holding edges especially on 2D shapes and where there isn't very much geometry on a mesh. To properly explain this would take a full video, but let's just leave it at use edge creasing as much as possible 
holding edges only when necessary. Now I'm going to do something that at first looks like a waste of time. I'm going to redraw some of the meshes. When you model and you're in the zone, often you become more focused on blocking out the shape instead of making neat and tidy loop cut meshes. And that's fine for getting something on screen, but I really recommend taking the time to go back and fix any strange loop cuts or distorted faces. I completely remodeled the front wings so that the faces have a nice even grid-like look to them, which is ideally what you want your meshes to look like. Because there were all sorts of weird, thin, narrow faces, that would have made the shading look off and would have likely caused problems with the subsurf modifier. Most of the time when you have distorted geometry, it comes down to you not having the correctly proportioned faces on a mesh. Here I'm using an array modifier to add this engine ribbing effect. To make an array going in a circle, all you need is to set the object's origin to an empty, tell the array modifier to offset around the empty, then rotate the empty. There's plenty of cool array modifier tutorials on YouTube, but this brings me to a good general blender tip. If anything is not doing what you expect it to be doing, check where the origin of the object is, apply scale and apply rotation using control A. You'd be amazed how many things this can fix, but until you realize it, it can cause several minutes of banging your head on the wall in frustration, which is not medically recommended. Then we're moving on to the last stage of modeling adding greebles. Greebles are just these random bits of technical looking details. No one knows what they are or what they do, but they can complete any hard surface modeling project, especially vehicles. The reference images of this ship show some greebles that I have copied onto the model, and I'm using the discombobulate add-on to add these random thingies at the back of the ship. Looking at the images of the ship, I can see some very defined panels at the center section. To make these, I've duplicated the center section, scaled it up a little, then cut out the panels. I then finished them off by using the solidify modifier and checking only rims for the fill option. And now we're on to the worst part of creating a 3D model, UV unwrapping. Okay, it's not that bad, but it's not all that fun. However, as long as you've kept the geometry fairly well organized and you haven't got too many large complicated pieces, this isn't too bad. Just make sure you apply the scale of all your objects before you hit unwrap, or else you're going to have some really distorted UVs. And there we are, a finished model of the T6 shuttle, a Republic ship used mostly by the Jedi. This is where the tutorial should finish as the model is completed, but I'm gonna do a quick overview section of my texturing process because I think it's quite fun to see how people texture models. First you want to add a material to every single object. Make sure each object has a separate material. This is very important as I'll be doing all my texturing work in Substance Painter. Then export the model as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. Almost immediately we can see a problem some of the faces have disappeared. Substance Painter uses backface culling, which is an option in Blender. And clearly I must have modeled some of the objects inside out, so the faces are not showing up. No matter, back to Blender, enable the normal direction indicator and fix the troublesome objects by flipping the normals. Export as an FBX and bring the model back into Substance Painter. Then I'm going to bake all of the texture sets, which can take a little while. And there we go, all done, hang on a minute. Those panels at the bottom are darker than the rest. I wonder what's going on. Back to Blender, and this time make sure you flip all the objects with normals that are the wrong way round. There we are. Now export the mesh back to Substance Painter and bake for texture sets. In Blender, make sure all the objects have had their scale applied, then export the FBX, bring it into Substance Painter and bake the texture sets again. Finally, this time it all looks good, so I'm going to start adding the materials. I'm using a mixture of normal and smart materials, some of which I got from Substance Source. Yes, I know I should be using more generators and using the height channels more, but this is meant to be a quick overview. Finally, I use a stencil to add the red sections to the shuttle, then export all the textures. Add the textures to the model in Blender, and there we have it, a textured T6 shuttle. I hope you found this video useful. 
and I hope it showed why you should make sure that all of your objects have their UVs the proper way around before exporting your models to Substance Painter. If you did find this video useful then please consider leaving a like and subscribing so as not to miss any new videos. See you later.